Well, the footy is finally back, and that means one more thing, Supercoach is back. We've got a lot of passionate Supercoach fans out there on the Sporting News platforms, so we've got all the information you need for round three. I'm joined by two of my fellow journalists here at Sporting News, Ed Chisholm and Nathan Williamson, and we're going to take you through all the players, all the info that we're going to be doing to our team so you can get a leg up over your mates this weekend. First off, I'm going to go to you, Ed, and we're going to go through our buy, hold, and sell for this week. Who are you picking up and who are you putting into your team? Uh, For me, the the first pick in uh, the Cherry Rups, aptly named, uh, might have to change that name now, but um, for me, the no-brainer selection in my team was Katoni Staggs from the Broncos. Um, He's the top scorer in Supercoach so far this year in in over two rounds. Um, Priced at 447k, so for me, still a very affordable option. Um, And just some of the attacking play we've seen him uh, demonstrating over those two opening rounds. Um, I'm predicting he's going to be a keeper for the rest of the year, so I feel like now's the time to get him because he's definitely set for a big price rise. I think he's um, looking at something like 60k added to that uh, 447 he's already priced at. So... I think now is definitely the time to buy Katoni Staggs, if at all, this year. Um, and he was definitely the first one I picked for my team. I think you're right in saying that if you're going to get him, it's got to be now. Because otherwise, once you're getting those centres that push into the 550, 600 range, it's almost not worth going after them because there's better options out there that you can save your money for other more important positions, I guess. But what about you, Nate? Who are you picking up this weekend? See, I'm going for someone who's got surprising low ownership. You're going Dylan Brown. He's had a great first two rounds. He leads all five eights in terms of points and especially those so crucial base points. Um, he gives you that dual status of having to go into either five eight or halfback. And I think he's got a decent run coming through. So I only owned by 4%, which I'm really surprised about. So I'm slotting him right in with a couple of notable halves that the missed a couple of weeks of time. I really like that pickup. Um, I think obviously he was impressive against the Titans, scored a massive over 100 plus points and really set him up for what was going to be a big season before the break. And especially with Reed Marnie set to not miss any games, straight back into the team, that spine is sold and should go well. I've taken a similar tack to you in terms of bringing in another half. I haven't brought in Dylan Brown, but I've gone for super coach favourite. Everyone has had him at some stage, Sean Johnson. And it's interesting. Obviously, I'm a Sharks fan. Usually, I don't let that influence my super coach picks. But in terms of the strength of the draw, Sean Johnson could be someone you just set and forget for the rest of the year because the Sharks have been handed a very easy draw, lots of games against bottom four opponents from last year. And when you, he's got the goal kicking as well, so he's sure to get some points. Obviously, Bronson Zeri no longer in the team. Less attacking flair there, but he looked good against South. Not so good against Storm. Was a bit quieter, but extra 11 weeks to get his game going. I think Sean Johnson could be a handy pickup. Now he has got 13% ownership, so it is high. It's not a pod. It's nothing like that. But I think he could be, in terms of people you set and forget for the rest of the season, considering the Sharks draw, I think that's that's where I'm going. Now, Ed, who are you holding? Who, who are you not reluctant to let go of yet? Who do you just want to hold on to for a little bit longer? Again, like you, Lockie, it could be bias talking for me since I'm a, a, a passionate Dragons fan, but I'm going to be clinging on to um, Tyrell Fuimiano uh, a little bit longer. Um, he has lost his starting second row spot to um, Tarek Sims, who comes back from injury. He was missing in the second round against the Panthers, uh, which gave Fuimiano that starting role, and he absolutely flourished. He scored in the 70s, um, which is... Definitely uh, a, pr- a pretty good value considering he's still priced at 201k. But even though he is sitting on the bench this week um, in round three, I'm still going to hang on to him for a couple more weeks because I feel like he's due for a pretty strong price rise um, and, and could be used to upgrade to a, a mid-range or a, a point of difference player in a couple of weeks' time. But I, I feel like uh, if you've already got him in, in your team, there's no point letting go of uh, Tyrell Fulmione just yet. And his dual position, being a centre wing as well, that around that 200k mark, that's just a huge benefit, don't you think? Definitely. Um, and even though he is uh, sitting on that bench, um, you know, I thought he might have he might have scored the lock starting lock role, which has been handed to James Graham this week. But um, knowing James Graham's minutes uh, becoming severely reduced o- over the years now that he's sort of an ageing veteran forward, I still can see Phil Mayone playing a fair few minutes off the bench. 
against the Warriors. Um, and he's he's a real attacking player as well, as well as being a, a defensive force. He's he, uh, a lot of tackle breaks against Penrith and he's quite a quick uh, edge forward as well. So I could still see him playing a fair few minutes this week despite being on the bench. What about you, Nath? Who are you holding on to this week? I'm also ha- holding on to Tyrell as well. But the one I'm looking at is Liam Knight. It surprised me when I was looking at the people who've most traded out. He's third highest. Like he hasn't, he's still starting at lock. He scored pretty well for his price. I think he's still going to make a decent amount of coin. But I'm surprised people are getting rid of him so early in the season. Coming up against the Roosters, South Park's going to be primed. Um, Tom Burgess already saying during the week they're taking it personal. I reckon he's someone, don't get rid of him too early. Let, let him play out a couple of seasons. He's not going to lose a couple of games. He's not going to lose too much coin. So I reckon he's just, he's a wait and watch for me. I agree with you on that one. He is in my starting team. He is not going anywhere. And my hold this week is a fellow Souths player. It is the guy who has just signed a new big contract, Cam Murray. Now, he's a bit, he's one of the big high profile players in the Souths lineup now. He's the starting number 12, but he didn't really perform in the first two weeks, but I don't think that's what we can expect from him the rest of the season. I think he will perform. He's a gun player. He's young. And he's already been scoring massive points, as we saw throughout last year. Now, he is set to take a bit of a hit this weekend with a break-even of 102, I believe it is. And considering he's only averaging 48, he could drop down a bit. But I think he's a sort of player you can sort of ride that wave with and just hold on because he will bring value for the rest of the season. Now, Ed, I think, I believe your sell is another one of his South's teammates this week. Yeah, and... A pretty controversial one, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the biggest uh, trades to be made this week by Supercoach players, and that's Damian Cook. Uh, obviously, he's probably I think he's the most expensive player in Supercoach at the moment, given how strongly he performed last year, um, and he is you know a top five player in the NRL. But we saw over the opening couple of weeks, he's only got an average of 41 points. Um, and therefore, he's set for a massive price drop from 705k. I've traded Damien Cook out for Appy Corusau from Penrith, um, another 80-minute hooker who has a massive average of in the 80s over the first couple of rounds. Um, and Cook's break-even of 135 down to Corusau is set to cash in $360,000 in just that one trade. Um, at the same time, I'm expecting Appy Corusau to go uh, make a ma- massive price rise too. Um, so you're looking to bank a lot of cash just in that one trade over the next couple of weeks. I think the rule change, uh, the six again rule change, will definitely benefit Damian Cook. Um, you know, he's a very elusive player out of dummy half. So I'm sure if, uh, if, if Supercoach players wanted to trade Damian Cook back in in a couple of weeks' time, they definitely could. But I feel like now is a really good time to uh, trade him out, given he's going to drop in values significantly. I think especially with the five trades that everyone has this weekend, it's almost a no-brainer if you're playing it in terms of building up that cash pile. Cash pile. Um, what about you, Nath? Who, who are you selling in your team this week? So, so correlates to my bar of the week. I brought in Dylan Brown, but unfortunately, it's Daily Cherry Evans. It's time to go. Yeah, two, in two decent performances for Manly, he didn't score that well. So, so with a lot of these halves, like your Browns, your Scott Drinkwater, who we haven't mentioned before, he's a... Is going to be. He's played very solid for the first couple of weeks. I just don't see any point holding on to the onto these players, and they're just going to lose money. And especially with he's got thirty seven trades for the rest of the round, you can easily bring him back in if you if he all of a sudden turns it around. So I think it's a no brainer to get rid of DCE for this week. Well, to round things up, my sell is a pretty obvious one. It is David Fafita. Obviously, he's out through injury. He's set to miss a, still an extended period of time. He won't be back anytime soon. So it just makes sense. There's no point holding onto him on the bench when there's other players that you can bring in to try and bring that value up. At the moment, I've traded him out for Luciano Lelua because obviously he's an 80-minute forward. I think those points, you, you need to get those points and there's no point having someone like Fafita on your bench when he's not going to be playing. He's definitely going to come straight back into my team as soon as he's fit. But just at the moment, yeah, got to get rid of him while he's injured. So with the footy back, it meant that we finally had our first teamless Tuesday in 11 weeks. A couple of big surprises, big selection shocks. Nath, who are your winners and losers from round three teams? So the main winner I had from this team list Tuesday is Jamil Hopawadi. I think with, as you mentioned, 
earlier with Dave for theater out, was wondering who was going to go into that second row, second row role. Someone like Hopawati offers great value, still at that base price of 171,000. Um, you have often in Gowie's on the bench. He might look to sort of restrict his minutes, but even at that low price, he's going to make you money. He's, I think he's one of the must-haves, the big winners out of this one, this team list. A uh, big loser for me was Jordan Rapana. He was one of the surprise sort of signings of this sort of coronavirus lockdown period. And particularly for those playing draft like myself, I jumped on him as soon as, soon as he was available. And it was a surprise to see that um, the Raiders have just have not put him in the starting lineup. He's still sort of at that ugly price. But I think that it, once he gets going, he's going to be a set and forget in most teams. Do you think he has what it takes? Uh, obviously, Kotrick and Simonson have been pretty good in terms of the last 12 months. Do you think that one of them will have to make way to get Rapana back into the team? Yeah, I don't envy Ricky Stewart with this decision. Uh, I think Rapana's he's coming off only a couple of months in rugby union, and so that transition period's not going to be too bad. I think he was saying he's only played a couple of trial matches, and it'll be interesting to see if Ricky sort of rewards it like... Um, the loyalty that he put in Simonson, especially. But look, when Rapana's on, in my opinion, he's a top 10 winger. So unfortunately, I think for Simonson, he would likely drop off to the bench. But you've got to see how they perform against the Storm this week. I reckon that's going to be a big performance to sort of decide both Simonson's and Rapana's supercoach future. Big question for you. Can Rapana perform without Jerry Leilua there in the centres next to him? Oh, it's a tough one. They were, they were the dream combo a couple of years ago. Leigh Parner was the sort of nickname going around. But I think he's good enough. That, and you've also got decent sort of out centres outside him with the likes of Jack Croker and Curtis Scott. Mm. I mean, they, give, they give him the ball. He can make magic and he can once again get back to that supercoach gun status. What about you, Ed? Who have you got as the winners and losers from round three teams? So I've got a couple of winners and losers from this week's team list. Um, my first one would be Connor Watson. Not necessarily saying super coaches should bring him into the te- their teams, given he is priced at 506k. Um, but I think the signing of Adam at, uh, Andrew McCulloch. Uh, many thought that perhaps Connor Watson would lose his starting hooker spot uh, um, and be placed on the bench. But Andrew McCulloch isn't even to, to be seen at all in the team list. So it looks like Connor Watson could be set for an 80-minute performance against the Panthers. Um, and we've seen in the past, playing hooker, he is an absolute freak, super coach wise I think he averages in the 70s when wearing that number nine. So I think that's definitely a winner for those super coach players that have Connor Watson in their team already. Uh, secondly, I've gone with Jermaine Tanua-Brown from the Warriors. Um, the Warriors are obviously in the midst of a massive injury crisis, and that's why... Uh, Tanua Brown has been promoted from the bench to the starting front row position. Um, And he had a massive uh, first two rounds for the Warriors before the season was suspended. Um, Some really strong scores and he's still priced $171,000. So uh, Supercoach players should be cashing in on him right now because he's set to rise uh, massively in the next couple of weeks. Um, Losing Losers, I've gone with Thomas Flegler from the Broncos. Matt Lodge is set to come back from injury this week. Um, and we saw Flegler play some really big minutes in the opening two rounds for the Broncos. Um, and he's definitely set to make some, some serious coin over the next couple of weeks. But I, I'm predicting his minutes are going to go down significantly now that Matt Lodge is back. Um, Thomas Flegler's got some great base stats and he'll still play a massive role for the Broncos. But I just can't see he, him scoring uh, as big a scores as he has in the first two rounds now that Lodge is back. And then I've also gone with uh, Brandon Wakeham from the Bulldogs. Um, probably doesn't have the big ownership in most super coach sides, um, given he is sort of a fringe player for the Bulldogs. But we do know they're, they're pretty uh, lacking in depth in the halves position. So the selection of Brandon Wakeham earlier in the season at 277k was, was a bit of a no-brainer for me. He's a pretty uh, skilled player, but he hasn't been selected this week at all. He's on the extended bench, and I can't see him coming into Dean Pay's side. Um, to face the Seagulls. So that's a massive loss for me. And um, I did have him on my bench and I've traded him out now. So, Yeah, I think that's a really interesting one. Obviously, he was there with Lachlan Lewis to start the season. Lewis was probably, he was the one that was hooked in that round uh, round one match, but then Wakeham yeah. is the one that's been dropped with Cogger coming in and especially with Foran coming back. It'll be hard to see Wakeham getting back in that side anytime soon. And I thought really interesting that Connor Watson one that it'll be interesting to see what, 
Adam O'Brien does up there because he does have the young development player, I think Chris Randall on the bench as well, who's played a bit at that dummy half position. So it'll be interesting to see whether he gets used, how much faith he puts in Watson. But I agree that especially with Andrew McCullough breeding down his neck, that he'll have to put in a good performance. Otherwise, he'll, he will be out of that side. So it's a big win for him at the moment, but he'll have to keep performing hard. My winners and losers this week, two big winners for me. Cody Nikarima from the Warriors. He was off the bench the first two rounds, but as Stephen Carney has said today, he wanted to change the team up. He wasn't happy with what Chanel harris Devita was providing, who is now out of the 17, and Nikarima comes into that 5'8 position. So expect him to get pretty much 80 minutes there and see what he can do. He hasn't quite hit his straps at the Warriors, but this could be the making of him with Carney giving him a bit of confidence and giving him the starting role. My other big winner is Adam Dwayhe from the West Tigers. He's been finally handed that number one jumper that Corey Thompson had for a little bit there. Moses Embai comes straight into the centres. Corey Thompson nowhere to be seen in the 21, which I found quite interesting. I thought they would have kept him around. Um, but yes, Adam Dwayhe, he's made the move from the Dragons us uh, from South Sydney because he wanted that fullback position and he is about to start there this weekend against the Sharks. So let's see how he goes and hopefully he can make that spot his own. My losers this week, my surprising one is Jared Wallace in a Titans forward pack that lacks experience. He's an origin player. He's a very good forward on his day, but he's been dropped to the bench with Sam Lasani and Fodawaka starting, I believe. So that's an interesting one that they haven't, put faith in him to keep that starting role, but they might change that around come game day. But again, it just puts question marks over his role, how many minutes he's going to play. And then my other one, which as a bit of a soft spot, is Billy Magulius. I thought he put in a great performance in that round two game against the Storm. Got the Sharks only try, but clearly wasn't quite enough to hang on to that spot in the 17. He did come in late for that match. I believe Scott Sorensen and Britton Nakora, sorry, Britton Nakora was injured. Scott Sorensen started and Magulius came off the bench. But I thought he might have been able to build off that push for a spot in the 17, but he's just missed out. Very unlucky because I think he will be in that 17 in years to come. But for anyone who might have had him on their bench, you've probably got to look to get rid of him now. So now we're going to look at some of the big cash cows where you can make your money this weekend. Of course, it is round three. That's when the price rises come into effect. Ed... Who are you looking at to make you some money this weekend? So he's already on my bench um, and I'm really looking forward to that price rise in a couple of weeks' time. And that's Elias Katoa from the Warriors. Um, a minus 47 break-even. He scored really strongly in those opening two rounds. Loses his starting spot this week against the Dragons, but I still see him playing throughout the year. Um, we know he was just signed to a four-year deal to the Warriors. So they definitely value him very highly. Um, and he's set to make a, a stunning amount of cash, uh, starting at 171k now. But um, I'm predicting a massive price rise over the next couple of weeks. Um, and the other the other player I've gone with is Isaiah Yo from the Panthers. Um, he's due to play 80 minutes this week, as he has for the start of the season on that edge for the Panthers. Um, he's proven he's a super coach uh, player in the past from previous seasons, and with a break even of minus 29. And the price of 404k, I think he's definitely someone to bring in, um, perhaps replace a Liam Knight with an Isaiah Yo, for example. So those are my two cash cows for the week. I think they're pretty good ones there. What about you, Nath? The one player I've looked at is Kurt Mann. I think he's been one of the surprise packages of the season. He, um, going into that 5-8 role seems to be where he's best played. He's been sort of used in that utility role throughout his career. And he offers really good value at that sort of centre position. Only 287000 in a year where it's very rare to find that good mid-range centre option. So I think if the only worry is Tex Hoy coming into the side. If he has a blinder, what does, does Kurt Mann all of a sudden go back to the bench? Does he go onto the wing or into the centres? That's sort of danger of his versatility. But even with that, he's still going to make you some decent money in that position. He's expected to make 40k already this week. If he, if, only if he scores 30, which is beat in his two other games this week. I think the ninth draw is decent enough for attacking players. So I reckon he's one of you should be one of your must-haves for this week if you want to make some coin. Another one that we've mentioned earlier is um, Tanua Brown at negative 29 break-even. 
He's had a wonderful year. Rushed into that Indigenous All-Stars game and didn't look out of place. As you mentioned earlier, that uh, Warriors pack has been depleted in terms of the injuries to Almau and Medicola for the front rows. So I reckon if you don't have him, get on board. He's still at that base price and he's going to make some decent coin. I think there's some pretty good ones. I know I've got most of them in, in and around my team. I think... My big cash cow this week is one that everyone has been talking about. It is Emre Gula from the Canberra Raiders. He's currently on 220000 That's how much you can get him for. But he has a break even of minus 70 at the moment. So at the moment, his projected price rise is 86000 And that's only if he scores 45. He's averaging 69. So if he gets above that, look for a price rise up near the 100000 mark. It's, it could be a big one if you can get him onto his, in, onto your bench. But as he's only a front rower, it's about changing around. Do you give him one of those bench spots? Do you have a Tanua Brown and a Gula? Can you fit them all on your side? I think that's the big question you've got to ask. Then the other cash cow I've brought in for my bench this weekend is Ben Hampton from the Cowboys. He has started on the wing in the last in the first two rounds of it this year and he starts there again this week against the Titans. He has a break-even of minus 37. He's around that 237,000 mark at the moment and is expected to go up around 63,000, I believe it is at the moment. So he is one where if you want to try and make some money out of that center wing spot, start cheap, build up. He's one that you should be looking to bring in this weekend, I think. All right, to finish off, we're going to each pick our player to watch and then also letting you know who we're putting our captain on this weekend. Nath, player to watch, hit me with it. Who have you got? He's been the man of this corona sort of shutdown period, Latrell Mitchell. I know he's been in the headlines, but he comes in this week as the high, with the highest break even, 160 after two lackluster performances at fullback. Um, I think we all know at centre he's an elite player. He's one of those players that you set and forget. And so the question's always been, how long does Wayne persist with him at fullback? And the word out of South Camp is he's a lot fitter than last time. He's a lot... He's looking a lot stronger and he's a lot, more importantly, he's a lot happier than what he was. So I'm interested to see how that relates and how that goes against his old team, the Roosters. I think he's, in his, regardless of your feelings of him, he's going to come down in price after two really low performances. So I think he's someone you've just got to watch out for. And almost, it's almost waiting for that big boost, that one time where he gets used to the fullback and he just excels from there. I think that's going to be a big, sort of, big difference maker in a lot of super coaches this year. Ed, what about you? You're looking at someone who maybe isn't near your team yet, but a couple of strong performances could put in there. Yeah, so my player to watch for this round would be Jermaine Asako from the Broncos. Um, he was a, a, a bit of a shining light a couple of years ago for the Broncos, started as a cheapie and, and really came in guns, all guns blazing, but then had a bit of a shocker last season. But from those first two rounds, we saw a massive performance from him. Um, he's sort of got a mortgage on that fullback role in Anthony Seabold's side now that uh, Jack Bird is on the long-term injury list. Um, and over those two rounds, he's got a 73 average. He's also got the kicking duty. So there's definitely a lot of uh, attacking value in Jermaine Asako. But having seen how, uh, how inconsistent he tends to be, I'm still going to sort of keep an eye on him this week rather than bring him in straight away. Like you, I've gone with a fullback for my player to watch, but I've gone with someone at the complete other end of the spectrum making his debut. We mentioned him earlier, Tex Hoy. He comes into that fullback position to replace the suspended Kalen Ponga. And if you watched any of the NRL lines, you know this kid has got a supreme amount of talent. And it's just about seeing whether he can replicate that on the NRL stage now. While it's unlikely he's set to be in the fullback position much longer with Ponga set to come back in in round four it's about putting in a strong enough performance to see him maybe get a wing spot maybe five eighth as Nath talked about earlier or even that bench spot in a 14 utility style role it'll be really interesting as one of the base price players since he hasn't played any NRL whether he can do enough to make a mark in that night's team and whether whether Adam O'Brien has to pick him from then on Um, now finally Nath your captain pick this weekend, who have you got? He's my set. I set for captain over the first two rounds. He'll probably be the captain for the next five. Payne Haas. I mean, he has been brilliant for the Broncos. I think especially with David Fafita being out of the squad now, he's going to really take that, that up front um, for that forward pack. He's 
he's just one of those players which is going to be you keep him outside no matter what happens. He's incredible. He's despite it being a Thursday game and people are going to be looking at that sort of VC that vice captain loop. You can't replace that with class. Pain house all the way. Well, I think Broncos will be looking for revenge after their humiliating loss to the Eels. So I think they're definitely ones to watch this weekend. And if, if Payne Haas plays well, the Broncos play well at the moment. What about you, Ed? I think you and I have come to an agreement on who we're going to be putting our big captain pick on this weekend. Yeah, mine deserves no explanation, I feel. Uh, Jason Tamalolo playing against the Titans. Uh, two massive scores, as we expected in the first two rounds. And playing against that... Uh, most would say weaker Titans pack. I feel like he's a bit of a no-brainer to put the C on this week. I'm the exact same as you. I was there for that Bulldogs game where he ran 345 metres and spoke to him after the game. And he didn't even look like he'd broken a sweat. It was insane. And it's it's not fair for the rest of the competition that you've got someone as big as him just tearing up teams for fun and running like an outside back. I was surprised he only got the 99 that game. I thought he might have gotten more, but with a captain's pick on him, that's still an incredible score and is why I'm going to be putting it on him as well this week. Guys, thank you for joining me today. Good luck to you and good luck to everyone out there for your first week back in Supercoach in a long time. And we will catch you next week.